Hey there, fellow gamers and horror enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the chilling history of one of the most iconic horror game franchises ever, Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm Lucas, and let's buckle up for a spine-tingling journey through the world of animatronic nightmares. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our creepy content. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where fantasy and fun come to life. Now let's roll back the clock to 2014. It started off as a game called Five Nights at Freddy's in 2014, which Scott Cawthon unleashed the first game upon the world. In Five Nights at Freddy's, players took on the role of a night security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. But what is the catch? The animatronic characters came to life at night, and surviving five nights meant carefully managing power and staying one step ahead of these mechanical monstrosities. Go away! Nobody likes you! It's still there! Just a few months later, in November 2014, the sequel, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, transported us to a prequel timeline. With new animatronics and mechanics, this game delved deeper into the sinister history of the franchise, giving players a chilling glimpse into the past. Hello? Hello, hello? Uh, well, if you're hearing this, then chances are you've made a very poor career choice. Fast forward to March 2015, and Five Nights at Freddy's 3 introduced a new setting, Fazbear's Fright, the horror attraction. Here, players braved the terror while navigating through a horror-themed attraction based on the infamous pizza joint. As summer approached, so did Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Released in July 2015, this installment took us out of the pizzeria and into a child's bedroom. The stakes were higher, the gameplay was more intense, and the story delved deeper into the eerie backstory of the series. Next, in October 2016, Five Nights at Freddy's sister location shook things up. This time, players ventured into an underground facility and faced animatronics in various sections. The story explored themes of control and manipulation, unraveling even more mysteries within the franchise. The games went all the way up to the year 2021 titled Security Breach. The franchise has included a number of games and books. There is a total of 13 FANAF games, with eight in the main series and five as spin-offs. In terms of books and novels, there are a total of 28, including 15 novels, two guides, and 11 graphic novels in the Fazbear Fright series. Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy. Now let's discuss the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic characters. 1. Chica is one of the main animatronics in the series, often seen carrying a cupcake. She's part of the band at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and is known for her obsession with pizza. 2. Chica's cupcake, an animatronic itself, is present in both the game and the movie's trailer. 3. Foxy is another original animatronic known for his unique behavior. He's located in Pirate Cove and has a noticeable state of disrepair. Foxy is considered one of the harder threats to deal with due to his speed. 4. Bonnie, a member of the main band, has gone missing from later entries in the franchise. In the original game, he was active and posed a consistent challenge. 5. Freddy Fazbear. As the pizzeria's mascot and band leader, Freddy is a constant presence in the series and is usually a formidable enemy to face. 6. Golden Freddy, a mysterious animatronic that appeared in the first game as a hallucination. The movie trailer suggests a more interactive role for Golden Freddy. Why do I always get the weirdos? 7. Springtrap, the main antagonist of Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Springtrap is possessed by the spirit of William Afton, a key figure in the franchise's lore. Now that you have a brief glimpse into the game's past and Freddy's beginnings, let's now plunge into the realm of the brand new 2023 live action movie. I will work and you will sleep. I understand. Almost a decade following the debut of the initial Five Nights at Freddy's game, the moment has arrived at last. The film has garnered significant attention from both gamers and horror fans. The film is set in modern day. The restaurant that was once popular in the 80s is now run down and overgrown with vines. But the inside is a time capsule. Nothing's been touched since then, so everything is undamaged but decorated with a layer of dust. This place was huge in the 80s with the kids. They shut it down years ago. The owner's just not ready to let it go yet. The attention to detail both inside and outside of the pizzeria is incredible. Even though a lot of the games have a dark environment, certain patterns are consistent throughout. The black and white checkered borders that decorate the walls, the children's drawings on the tables and walls. The movie has attracted considerable interest from gamers and horror enthusiasts alike as well. The plot revolves around Mike Schmidt, who takes on the job of a security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Yes. 
the security guard, and soon realizes that the animatronic mascots come to life and pose a threat during the night. Schmidt's struggle for survival unfolds as he keeps watch during the nighttime shift, facing off against malevolent animatronics that awaken after midnight. There are ghost children possessing giant robots. Thanks for the heads up. The casting of actor Josh Hutcherson as the main character, Mike Schmidt, in the upcoming movie has been an exciting choice with fans. However, the movie has experienced delays, allowing for the development of central characters. From the initial segment of the trailer, we observe Mike reaching out to Steve Raglan, a professional career advisor, to inquire about the current status of a job opening. Given that Steve is the individual responsible for introducing Mike to Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, it's plausible to assume that Steve holds a significant role, potentially even co-owning the establishment under the guise of Dave Miller in the game's narrative. However, it's important to note that Dave Miller is a fabricated identity used by William Afton, a key figure known to be the main antagonist within the day shift at Freddy's trilogy. Afton, portrayed as a serial killer, bears direct and indirect responsibility for each instance of incident, murder, and tragedy throughout the series. His role is pivotal within the franchise's storyline. If this theory holds true, it's conceivable that Scott Cawthon, the creator of the Fana franchise, along with the movie's director Emma Tammy, may have intentionally altered the name from Dave Miller to avert predictability among the dedicated fans of FANF. Devotees of the series would promptly associate the name Miller with the story's antagonist, thus prompting the change to sustain an element of surprise. In the game, the main character Mike Schmidt is revealed to be William Afton's son. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. He takes a job as a night guard, hoping for free pizza, but the animatronics in the game attack him, mistaking him for his father. The movie adaptation diverges from this, showing that Mike Schmidt takes the job to pay rent instead of the pizza perk. Hutcherson's experience in dark fantasy roles makes him a suitable choice for the role, as he can balance the character's dark familial backstory with the horror elements of the story. Have you met them yet? Meant who? Other cast members include Matthew Lillard, who you may remember from other horror movies such as 13 Ghosts and the Scream franchise. Strawberries! I'm okay, Scream! Elizabeth Lale and Mary Stuart Masterton will also be joining. In fact, one thing that most of you might want to know is that the movie, and sequels we hope, will take place in the universe of FANAF 1 through 3 only. The games after Five Nights at Freddy's 3 will not exist in the movie universe. Hey there, fellow Freddy fans. Hope you're all having a blast diving into the thrilling world of Five Nights at Freddy's. If you've enjoyed the jump scares, the suspense, and the nostalgic vibes as much as we have, don't forget to show us some love. Remember to hit that thumbs up icon and smash that subscribe button. Also ring the bell icon so you never miss out on our animatronic horror adventures. And hey, don't be shy. Drop a comment below sharing your favorite hair-raising moment in the game or movie trailer. Universal Pictures has unveiled the official trailer, showcasing an array of new scenes and Easter eggs that have stirred up excitement within the fan community. Among the alterations to the game's plot are changes to character names and motivations, offering a fresh perspective. Notable Easter eggs are scattered throughout the trailer, such as the recognizable Toreador March song, character Bonnie's unexpected appearance in the janitor's room. This simple yet accurate scene is a plus point to ensure fans get a glimpse of the horror they once felt while playing the game. There will also be an introduction of the intriguing Spring Bonnie. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and 3, players need to act like detectives, constantly monitoring the vent systems to avoid the animatronics. Quick reflexes in closing vents and checking security cameras are crucial for survival, and these aspects are also referenced in the movie trailer as Easter eggs. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. The trailer also showcases cameos through an Employees of the Month board outside the restaurant's security office, displaying photos of Daco, 8-Bit Ryan, Fusion's Gamer, Razbowski, and more. 
This subtle form of recognition is seamlessly integrated into the setting, enhancing the cameo experience without being overt. The name William Afton also hints at some differences from the games. For example, the villain hides behind the fake name Dave Miller, co-owner of the pizzeria. In the trailer, however, it seems to be a man with the nameplate Steve Raglan, possibly a false trail for those who know the game. This could just be a coincidence, but since Matthew Lillard, who also played Ghostface in Scream, there is a knife wipe scene by Spring Bonnie as a reference to Lillard's previous role, balancing faithful adaptations with plot twists. The film caters to both ardent game enthusiasts and those new to the franchise. <laughs> The Missing Children features a notable scene where the character Mike is in a woodland area, accompanied by children wearing attire reminiscent of animatronic characters from the franchise. These outfits include Foxy's hook, Freddy Fazbear's top hat, Chica the chicken's yellow and white shirt, and Bonnie the rabbit's bunny ears. This scene draws a connection to the children who went missing in the 1980s, resulting in the closure of the restaurant. In the 80s, kids went missing. The police searched Freddy's top to bottom. Hello? Interestingly, this moment also mirrors a similar occurrence in the third novel, The Fourth Closet, where a character encounters and aids the vanished children. This suggests that the upcoming film might incorporate narrative elements from the novel series. Despite being briefly shown in the trailers, the accuracy of the office monitors and the camera angles depicting various parts of the restaurant is impressive. Notable locations like the main stage and Pirate's Cove, home to the character Foxy, are faithfully recreated in the trailers, closely resembling their in-game counterpart. Parts. This attention to detail suggests that these scenes may have been directly adapted from the games. The movie received a PG-13 rating for strong, violent content, bloody images, and language. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie trailer has generated excitement among fans of the horror franchise, particularly young ones. However, there's uncertainty about whether these fans will be allowed to watch the movie in theaters due to potential age restrictions. And will parents allow their kids to this movie regardless of the rating? We will have to wait to find out. Good. The film is directed by Emma Tammy, who is known for directing films in the horror and thriller genres. Produced by Blumhouse Productions is renowned for their success in the horror movie genre, with notable hits including Insidious, The Purge, Paranormal Activity, The Conjuring, and Get Out. The film also has involvement from creator Scott Cawthon. He is a game developer, designer, and writer. Cawthon has made over $20 million with his successful published books and video games franchise. And there you have it, a whirlwind tour through the spine-chilling history of Five Nights at Freddy's. From the first jump scare to the darkest secrets, this franchise has kept us on the edge of our seats for years. So, what's your favorite FanAF moment? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the haunted halls of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow FanAF fans. We would love your support and help us get to 700 subscribers. And remember, stay brave. Until next time, keep exploring the Flick universe with us. He's coming. <laughs>